Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah Dear students of Dania College uh, It's a long gap I am before you uh, It's our luck, it's our fate Because the world has never seen such a prolonged disaster, prolonged pandemic We are still in uh, the grief of coronavirus but we have to survive we have to continue our life that's why the college authority and uh, you can say it is nationwide government has taken decision that class should be taken online so that sitting at your drawing room you can attend the class and you can avoid coming out and avoid the touch of people and you can be safe from the attack of coronavirus. I think I am uh, well known to you but still I am uh, giving you the introduction. I am MD Abdul Rahim, Assistant Professor Department of English. Today I would like to discuss with you a very very important topic that you face to be difficult in the classes in the honors fourth year the most important and i think most interesting course is classics in translation Today I would like to deal with this course and uh, look at the board. I have written uh, a few words on the course. That is, course name, classics in translation, course code 241113. And today's topic, I think this is the most interesting one. Most interesting one in this course, I mean 24113 Agamemnon. First of all, let me make you familiar with the word. What does Agamemnon stand for? Probably in the class, when you were in the college, you came to know this name Agamemnon. Who is he? Let us introduce this great person before you. Agamemnon is one of the great Greek heroes. Follow. Greek heroes. One of the great Greek heroes hero among all the heroes after Hector after Priam you can name this person Agamemnon who is he and what happened to him and to his fate this is the main theme to be discussed today Agamemnon is a tragedy and the writer of the tragedy is Aeschylus Before going to know in detail of Agamemnon, we have to know something about Aeschylus. Who is he? That is our question. Aeschylus is one of the three most prominent Greek writers. And you will be surprised to know, I think you will be surprised to know that this is Aeschylus. Only this man, this writer in Greek history, in the Greek history of tragedy, he has got the national, national award for 
13 times in his total life. This is quite surprising. So today you are lucky enough, I think you are lucky enough that you are going to read the masterpiece of Aeschylus. Now let us jump to the topic, Agamemnon. This is a Greek tragedy. First of all, uh, can you tell me what is tragedy? I think if you were in the class, you could answer me, but now since this class is online, your, I am I am not just listening your answer. I repeat, what is tragedy? Tragedy is a kind of drama, is a kind of play that ends with sadness, death, blood, and tears. Tear. Whenever you will enter the story, inside the story. You cannot but shed tears seeing the predicament of the major characters. So, first of all, let us know the story of the great, great tragedy. What is the story? Agamemnon and Menelaus, two brothers. Menelaus's wife was Helen. Most probably you have heard the name of Helen of Troy. Helen. Helen was eloped by the prince of Troy and his name was Priam. Priam stole Helen. Helen's husband Menelaus requested Priam to back his wife by giving him a letter. But Prime did not pay any heed to the request. As a result, there was a serious battle between the two countries, Argos and Troy. When Aeschylus, when, I'm sorry, when Agamemnon along with his brother and some fleet of soldiers started journey for Troy in the sea in the ocean suddenly their ship came to an standstill I mean there was no wind and the ship was standing in the vast water so it was a great problem. All the soldiers were dying out and even Menelaus and uh, Agamemnon, they were also in, in serious trouble. The ship was standing in the sea. You can very easily guess what was the situation, how terrible was the situation. At the time, Calces a soothsayer, I mean a goddess, appeared before the ship and he and she had a hair, H-A-R-E, I mean Khargosh, which was very dear to her and it was murdered by Agamemnon and Menelaus. It was a terrible crime. It is a crime. Artemis, a virgin goddess, was determined to take revenge for this killing. Number one, Agamemnon has committed a crime by killing the hare and secondly the sheep was quite a standstill. So at the advocacy, at the request of Artemis, the virgin goddess, Agamemnon's daughter Ephigenia 
was killed. I like to clear you the matter to you that Artemis requested Agamemnon to sacrifice Ephigenia so that the war fleet can go ahead and so that Agamemnon can save the honor of the country. So it was very crucial point for Agamemnon that how being a father can kill a daughter. This is one side and the other side of the coin was that if he didn't kill his daughter his worship could not move and he could not save the honor of his country. He could not save the prestige of the country. So which way, which one would he like? At last he took decision, decision that he would kill his own daughter and save the honor of the country. And ultimately Ephesinia was killed by her own father. However, the ship again started running. Agamemnon and Menelaus went to Troy. And they continued their battle. And ultimately, they backed to their own country as the victorious hero. And when Agamemnon backed to his own country as war gift, as war gift, he took a very beautiful lady called Cassandra with him. Agamemnon back to his native land. Everything his wife, Clytemanestra, heard everything. She was shocked for two reasons. Number one, her daughter was sacrificed. Number two, her husband has brought a beautiful lady with him. For this to crime, Clytemanestra took a decision to kill her own husband with the help of her illicit lover <coughs> and this design was, this design was ultimately materialized. But the killing scene of Agamemnon was very shocking and very tragic and at the same time, time shocking, seriously shocking killing. Aegisthus, the lover of Clytemanestra, the wife of Agamemnon, helped Clytemanestra to kill Agamemnon when he was taking bath. In the washroom, Clytemanestra set a net and she trapped him. And with the blow of axe, sharp axe, Clytemanestra killed her own husband. But after killing, Clytemanestra was quite normal, quite usual. In favor of her killing, Clytemanestra demand, demanded that as a mother, how can a mother tolerate the sacrifice of a daughter? 
by the father himself. This is one side. What about Cassandra? Clytemonestra was also zealous of Cassandra and it is usual you know that a fair lady cannot tolerate another fair lady and sharing of husband is quite intolerable quite intolerable to a wife not only in our continent but everywhere Cassandra ultimately became the victim since Agamemnon was killed, it was quite impossible for Cassandra to escape herself. She was also the victim of the tragedy. Here, one thing I would like to mention that you can ask me uh, very simply that what Agamemnon did was for the sake of the country. He wanted, to, he wanted to save the prestige of the country at the cost of his own daughter. Okay. In this regard, Agamemnon is a true patriot, true lover of the country. But one thing you have to be informed that after the end of Troy war, when Agamemnon with his war fleet came back to his country, he was given a red carpet welcome. One thing arises here, one question arises here, that in the Greek society of that time, red carpet was only for the God and God is not for any human being. But since Agamemnon was a human being and he was given a red carpet welcome, it was a crime. Here the judgment of Agamemnon could not came forward, could not come forward. Whatever maybe, this is the story in short. Now, let me tell you the main theme of the play or drama. What is the main theme? Why did Aeschylus re write this drama? What does he want to mean here? Yes, he has expressed his own view with the voice of Cassandra. What is that voice? When Cassandra became totally, became totally helpless, she could understand, she could realize that what happened so far, what is happening so far, there is no control over it. There is no control of human being over it. You know, the Greek society, especially the Greek literature, was dominated by the, by the gods and goddesses. And you can just see that Cassandra ultimately summarizes the total events in this way. I'd like to write this single sentence on the board and you can just quote it. You can memorize it that all men all men inevitably all men inevitably are made to made to suffer in the hands of you can say fate 
our God. I think one thing has become total, totally clear to you that the Greek society was dominated. Greek life was dominated by gods and goddesses. And uh, I have not mentioned the term so far. Now I am doing that. Fate. Fate. You can say F-A-T. Fate. What is fate? Fatalism. Fatalism is one of the most important themes of Greek tragedies, of Greek plays. Men, men were nothing but puppets in the hands of gods and goddesses. As a result, what happened to Agamemnon? was of course guided by gods and goddesses. What happened to Clytemanestra? What happened to the innocent girl Ephigenia? Could not be avoided because fate or gods and goddesses play most vital role in the Greek society, in the Greek life. Man has nothing to do. Man has nothing to do but to suffer in the hand of, in the hands of fate. This single theme is clear and I think crystal clear when we go through the text of Agamemnon. Agamemnon came back to his country as a super hero, victorious superhero. But what happened to his fate? What happened to his life? He was trapped by his, by his wife, Clytemanestra. But most important thing here to note that in external appearance, Clyte Monastra did not show any remorse, any anger, any hostility towards her husband. Whatever she did, she did everything very calmly, very quietly, very judiciously. The dear students, <coughs> I request you to go through the text. The text in volume is very short. Uh, in Penguin public publications, it will not be more than uh, 70 or 80 pages. Please collect the text and go through it. Then you will get more and more interest and more pleasure. Before reading the text, I like to instruct you that you have to keep a English to English dictionary by your side so that you can easily understand the uncommon words. I like to conclude uh, today's class with a simple request to you that now we all, we all the people of the world are passing through a uh, very crucial period, crucial time. During this time, be alert, be cautious, and stay at your home so that you can safely lead your life. And uh, I think you are also very anxious about your exams your uh, college, I think you should be free of all anxieties. Still in this case we can see the predomination of fate. What is blotted cannot be blotted. The people of the world were never prepared to face us a situation, but we are going through it. This is a fate. So you can come to a conclusion that like the Greek 
society like the Greek people, we are also, I think, in the, we are also puppets in the hands of fate. So, the life of the ancient people and the life of ours, there is a very little bit difference, I think. So, I like to uh, repeat my request again that uh, classics in translation, you have another four books. Gradually, if I get time, if not in the class, I will be before you in online. But before that, for your better understanding, I repeat, for your better understanding, you have to re read the text and the introduction. At least, you have to have the primary conception of the characters, incidents, places, and the unities of drama. This course 241113 is very important for your literary development. If you cannot, if you, I think, if you pay, if you don't pay any interest to this paper, will miss the interest of real literature. So, collect this paper fully and concentrate on the study of these papers, especially Agamemnon, Iliad, the frogs. You were lucky enough, I think you were lucky, lucky enough that you were in touch with the masterpiece of the world, his world literature. So this is my recommendation and you can say it's request that you should go through all, all the papers, all the books from top to bottom so that you can answer in the exam hall whatever may be the questions, from wherever may be the questions. There are so many names of gods and goddess in this, in this drama, I mean Agamemnon. Take a pen and a script, just list them, who are the gods, who are the goddesses, who are the main characters. If you do like this, I think the things will be very, very easier before you, to you. There is, a important, there is an important question from this paper, this book, that do you agree that man is a simple puppet in the hand of fate? If you discuss this question in detail, I think you can touch every pros and cons of this paper, of this book. And if you go through it very deeply, it will be very, it will prove very interesting to you. Undoubtedly, very, very interesting. Now, let me have a look back. Agamemnon's brother, Menelas. Menelas's wife, who? She is Helen. It's a very common story, very popular story. In our boyhood, in our childhood, we have heard the story of Helen of Troy. Helen of Troy. Troy burns for Helen. There is a very common proverb. Troy burns for Helen. Beauty burns Troy. And just to save, just to rescue Helen, Agamemnon and his brother 
went to try to save the prestige of the country. And the story of the play Agamemnon revolves with this theme mainly. Another character, another question to you. In Shakespeare's Macbeth, you will see that Lady Macbeth was a very rude, very tough character. But there is another rude and tough character is this Clytemanestra. So, from different ages, from the literature of different ages, different centuries, we can come to know that writers, dramatists have always been creating characters which are found in our society. Social life has been completely painted in Agamemnon. Look at our society. This sort of incidents happen very frequently. But there is a difference here. What is the difference? What Agamemnon did was not for his own prestige, not for his own interest, but for the interest of the total nation. But for the interest of his countrymen. He was very dutiful brother. He was very loving brother to his brother Menelaus. Menelaus's wife was he loved. Agamemnon could be very callous. He could, but there was no offense if he did not pay any heed to this incident. But no, to save his wa his brother's wife, Menelaus did. I'm sorry, Agamemnon did everything possible. So one thing here you have to note that whenever you will discuss Agamemnon's life, Agamemnon's character, you have to note that Agamemnon was a very dutiful king, ruler, as well as a very loving brother. You can claim Agamemnon that he has killed his own daughter. Of course, it is very offensive, it is very illegal, it is very shocking to kill one's own daughter. But he was compelled to do it. If he, if he did not sacrifice Iphigenia, he could never risk to Troy. He could never save Helen's life. He could never bring glory for his country. Above all, what happened here? Everything was predominated by fate. Fatalism. You can uh, write the term fatalism. Fatalism. Let me write it on the board. Fatalism. Fate from fate the term fatalism fatalism in Bangla you can say adrishtabad the role of fate is in the earlier portion of my class I told you that the role of fate is very important factors in Greek tragedies. I would like to uh, come to a conclusion of this class with a uh, simple comment on the character that Agamemnon is a very popular and very interesting tragedy you have to read it, you have to take it in your heart.
especially when I, whenever I read the text, I become marveled having the dictions, having the species given by Clytemansra, the species given by Cassandra, the species given by Agamemnon himself, how lofty their thoughts were, how interesting the arrangement of the language is in the book. So dear students, don't forget to read and to go, in, go through the book. First of all, you have to note the names of the characters. I am just telling you the process of starting to read any drama or play. First of all, you have to read the background. If it is not available, you just open the pages of the books and go to the index, go to the introduction and list the characters first and the relationship the relationship among the characters. Wish you all the best for joining my class. If you would like to contact me, you can make a phone call or email or uh, I think I will be before you in the next class. Okay, thank you so much.